Hey, everybody. Great to see everybody today. My name is Kelvin Chin, and we're here for our monthly 30th uh, monthly Q&A session about afterlife uh, issues, topics, anything you want to ask me, basically. Um, and anything that you have that's related to the 30th November talk that happened in 2014 that's online that uh, you sh you should you should have checked out or know about at least from the events and the e uh, events announcement and the emails that I've been sending you guys. Okay, um, so that's gonna what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go our usual um, ninety minutes. So I'm pretty much doing a hard stop after ninety minutes because those some of you know that some of these times these sessions can go for a long time. <laughs> People just keep asking questions, so that's why I'm doing this monthly so that. If you don't get a chance, you can ask the next month and so forth and so on. Trying to organize my life, to, just to give you a little window into my life, trying to organize things so that I can answer people's questions um, completely, but in an organized fashion. Because if I'm emailing you back and forth the same answer that I gave the other person five minutes ago, you know, that that's eating up a lot of my time. It's not that I don't want to spend time with you, but I got to be efficient. Plus, I'm also finishing my third book right now, and I got to get that published, and I want to get that out in the next few months and so forth. And I just heard from the my book manager this morning that she can't help me with this book, but she's got family health issues going on with her father and this, that, and the other thing. So my point is that I got a lot going on, and this is a very efficient way for me to help all of you answer these questions okay about afterlife and so forth now as you know i also teach an afterlife series um uh that has a, a six week every uh, it's a six part series every other weekend um several times a year um so that's a way to get a little bit more in depth into some of the topics that we'll cover uh in, in a more q and a uh forum kind of standard uh, you know format in these monthly things. So you always have that option as well. Um, for those of you who have not met me before, I am not going to give you the same 10 minute intro uh, that I did last time, the first time we did this last month, because um, I just finished uploading right before the class. It finally got uploaded finally to YouTube. A short, the short 10 minute clip that I did last time. And um, so for those of you who have not worked with me, I suggest that you watch that short 10 minute uh, video clip that's on my public YouTube channel. You can just, you know, search for me in YouTube, Kelvin Chin, or you could type in Kelvin Chin Turning Within is the exact name of my YouTube channel. Either way, you'll find me. And watch that 10 minute clip that I literally uh, about half an hour ago, just uploaded, uh, finally uploaded. Okay. That'll give you a specific kind of introduction to this monthly series. It's not just an introduction to me. It's an introduction to me and how we're, 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 we're uh, what the context is. It'll give you a good contextual background in terms of this particular monthly um, media sessions that I'm going to be doing with you guys. So then we can get into the material quicker. All right. The new folk, the new folks will watch it, and obviously, after you watch it once, you don't have to keep watching it. And those of you who've worked with me many times, you already know how I work. Okay, um, but let me just say for the, the several folks here who are brand new to working with me here now, is that I take a um, my approach is to take a a uh, a, a rational as much as humanly possible, logical, because when nobody's perfect, that's why I say that, uh, approach to thinking about these ideas and concepts as it relates to the afterlife. They're based on my own personal experiences. So again, it's open for me. I'm interpreting, right? I'm interpreting, um, you know, what's, you know, what the, uh, uh, what my, my, what my experiences are, um, you know, Th that's the thing. So, um, uh, hold on one sec. So, like I was saying, just in terms of my approach, just a very, very quick uh, overview is that I'm here to help people. 
and I look at through the as much as possible a logical lens. These things are based on my own personal experiences, so there's I'm, I'm interpreting them obviously. Um, you'll hear me talking about some people and individuals uh, who have who have um, religious histories with many cultures. I do not take a religious approach to the what to what I'm teaching in the way I'm teaching. So don't be confused by that, okay? Um, again, if you have any if you're new and you have any questions about any of what I just said, feel free to ask me, you know, in the context of our sessions here uh, for any clarification on that. But as I said, I suggest that you watch that 10 minute video that I just posted on my YouTube channel. And I am going to include uh, a link to that video now in all my future uh, events and so forth so that new people will go just click on it and watch it and then be introduced so we can just dive right into your your questions uh sooner in these sessions okay so uh who wants to go first anything at all go ahead and if you could uh uh, since uh, I'm going to uh, um, post the recording of this and send this all to you who have registered for this series, uh, for this this session or in past sessions, everybody's going to get a recording. Um, I am going to. It's going to be recorded in Zoom in terms of speaker. So if you want to turn your camera on and be seen when you're asking a question, feel free. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Okay, but um, just a heads up on that. So. Um, why don't you go ahead? Who wants to go first? Questions? Questions? I have a question. Oh, Sharon, yes. <laughs> um, and and I understand that, and I love when George, you know, prefaces, you know, before you know, speaking that you don't have to believe me. You know what I mean? You can you know, totally. In fact, I want you to question, and I'm just wondering if, and forgive my voice, um, if it's uh what is the purpose is the purpose you know because some people are saying well it's a movement and when people hear movement they think you know it's going back to gotta have revolution you know like it's a movement like what is this um sharing information is this you know do with it what you will with this information is this okay people are going to gather together and have another project a movement um so i'm curious as to and it could be not either or it could be a whole bunch of things of what individuals make of it but i'm wondering yeah. your take on it i'm just asking a question yeah it's oh great... and i'm very curious yeah. also for everyone here what brings you here today that's what i'm really interested to but that's the second part but yeah and that's a question to yes. each person to to talk about yeah yeah so that so your first question it's a great question what's the context of well let's talk about two things let's break this into two parts you got these sessions that kelvin chin is doing monthly but let's talk first about what George Hammond, uh, you know, talked about in the 30th November talk in 2014. So uh, if you haven't watched that yet, I suggest that you check that out. It's just at 30thnovember.com. You have to put the TH in there, 30thnovember.com on the internet. It'll take you to a website and you'll see there's a video there, a recording uh, of a lecture that I organized. I helped organize that. Um, and my friend George Hammond gave the talk. And basically it was a download from uh, many of the spiritual leaders on the other side who started the Judeo-Christian Islamic Vedic traditions that Sharon was just kind of briefly alluding to. So let's talk about the 30th November talk and then we'll talk about what I'm doing with you guys here on a monthly basis. So the bottom line on, as George says at the beginning of his talk in 30th November, again, it happened now eight years ago, over eight years ago now, <laughs> just had the eighth year anniversary, it happened in 2014. Um, the main thrust was to share ideas and concepts uh, and explanations about what the thinking was. It was like a, it was like a pulling back the curtain that's why he picked the image. If you go to that website, you'll see there's a hands pulling back a curtain. It's like pulling back the curtain on the history of spirituality on planet Earth in those four major traditions. And it was their explanations that was downloaded from the other side um, 
and um, on, on, on why they were doing what in, over the last 10,000 years in those four major traditions. Um, so, so it was not to create a movement, it was primarily an explan explanatory discussion. That's primary what, what that talk was about. Secondarily, uh, or you could look at it as primary, <laughs> if you're depending which way you want to look at it, because there's history, there's the past, and then there's the looking forward. So you could look at that mm -hmm. as primary, right? Because we live from the present and move forward. Is was the was the planting of ideas and perceptions and new um, perspectives by those same spiritual leaders. We're talking Jehovah, Jesus, Shankara, who started the Vedic tradition, or he didn't start it, but he was one of the early progenitors of the Vedic tradition. Uh, in the Vedic tradition, out of the Vedic tradition comes Buddhism and Hinduism. For those of you who don't know what the Vedic tradition is, and there's others, there's Jainism, and there's other isms that come out of there. But the main ones that most people know are Hinduism and Buddhism come out of the Vedic and Islam. Okay, so you got uh, Judeo Christian Islamic Vedic. So you got those, uh, you got Jehovah, Jesus, um, you know, Muhammad, you got, you got John the Baptist involved with uh, Jesus and in, 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 in early, early what we are called, what are called Christianity. Uh, yeah, that's a whole other thing, right? Jesus did not start Christianity. Uh, we, if, some, if that confuses anybody, please come back and ask me about that in a minute or two. Um, but to answer uh, Sharon's good question, not to create a... He was a rabbi. <laughs> yeah, he was a rabbi. Exactly. Jesus was a rabbi. Uh, Sharon's question is, is that we're not... It wasn't to create a movement. It was to give explanations and, and to share ideas to think about going forward. What each person did with, does with that is up to that person, right? Yeah. So, yeah. in fact, in fact, Sharon brings up a... And I think that's really important to point that out because it's not something like here's, you know, um, you know, people have asked, well, is this a is this a different religion? What do you guys do? Is this it? No, it's just information, sharing information. It's almost like when you see um, a picture of a, that picture of a woman and you can kind of see the old, I hate when they say this, but old tag or the young lady, you know, with the, you know, that kind of chain around her neck and it's kind of like seeing it. And then you can see it this way and pulling back the curtain, you could see it this other way. And when seen, it's not, you can't unsee it. And what you do with it is what you want to do with it or not. Exactly. Beautifully said, um, uh, Beautifully said, Sharon. Thank you. And so that's Sharon just summed up what I was trying to <laughs> articulate there. Okay, that's it. And so you take from it what you will, and you take what works, you discard what doesn't work. And that's what I yes. say all the time in my teaching as well. I've been saying this for those of you, some of you have been working with me for 50 years. I've been saying this for many, many decades this lifetime. You take what works and you discard the rest. We're all on a self-development journey. What does self-development? It means self. You point to yourself. It's a personal mm -hmm. journey. It's very personal. Yes. It's the most intimate personal thing you can do is your journey with yourself. So we all have to figure it out ourselves. I mean that seriously. Yes. And and George also pointed that out with the message of um that that time of the gurus is over. You know, yes. it, it's your utilizing your own free will, your own discernment. You know, when people say, well, is this right or wrong? Um, is this the right thing or not the right thing? Which way? How should I do it? Should I should I listen to what Georgia says? Should I accept? You know, you want to listen, listen. It's all about your own, taking that own empowerment. It's actually really cool. Yeah, beautifully said. And to segue to, 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 to um, let's say, jump off the diving board that you just put in front of me, Sharon, uh, you know, Jehovah and Jesus, I say Jehovah and Jesus, but also Shankara and Swami Bhavananda, the others there too, but I, I, I often say Jehovah and Jesus because personally I came out of a Christian background, you know, growing up and so forth and so on. So so they, they, their names are more familiar to me. The personality now have I, that I've had communication with them, with them is more familiar. But... Um, <clears throat> 
they would underscore what you're saying and say, you can still believe in them as God or whatever you want to, but they're not encouraging that. They're not saying that you have to, and they don't even view themselves in that way, okay? They, and they made that very clear on 30th November that they don't view themselves that way. But as Sharon just said, if you want to still view them that way, they're okay with it, yeah. right? And I'm going to allow okay. others to, to talk right. here and just go back on mute. But I yeah. do want to point out that when I did see the 30th um, November talk, and um, well, I fell asleep a couple of times because uh, George's voice is so calming. But then when I got it all, you know, in my brain, I said, oh, no, because, you know, I, you know, I had a, as we all do sometimes, you know, had this tumultuous relationship with our well-meaning adults, hopefully in our lives. And they said, but I always viewed God, you know, God, the father and, and George, said, you could still view him like that, you know, and, and you can also, but seeing that image both ways so i can kind of still say okay god the father but also oh yeah this is also this this really you know energetic powerful kind of energetic being that you know kind of like all together with these projects that you know for the betterment of mankind so i can see it both ways it's not an either or you know um and that's all i'll say for the moment but thank you for doing these and thank you for being here Oh, but thank you for saying what you did and asking and sharing your perspective on these things, because it's so valuable for people to hear other people besides me uh, talking about this, you know, and hearing how other people have processed and synthesized and digested the, these, these concepts in their own way. Because Sharon, you heard Sharon express some of the similar ideas, but in her own way, differently from me, you know, and it's beautiful. Um, yeah, and so then my take on, you know, in, in doing this monthly with you guys is fits with that and segues perfectly with that, uh, you know, fits together perfectly with that. Because again, I'm not here to change people's belief systems. That's not what I'm here to do. I am here to help under help you understand from different perspectives. And again, what resonates you take and what res what does not resonate you you shelf you put it on the shelf <laughs> it's okay i don't take that personally in fact i respect that and i encourage i more than respect it i encourage it each person has to, we have to be we're all independent free thinking beings whether we realize it or not sometimes we feel like we're under the control of <laughs> you know our our boss at work or or uh, our, our our spouse, <laughs> our kids, you know, uh, you know, our doctors, you know, uh, our politicians. Sometimes we feel like we're not really in control, but ultimately, it really is up to us. And especially when we're talking about spirituality, which is internal, it's like how we are synthesizing and thinking about ourselves in the place in our and our place in the universe. It's so personal. So I encourage everybody to take whatever works that I say that helps you and you shelve what doesn't. And, 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 and we, we are each figuring things out together. And quite frankly, I learn a lot from your questions. You know, I, mm -hmm. Me, personally, I do when you ask me stuff. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? And, we, and, we, and the encouragement of um, the 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 utilizing of how it works for you because we are all individuals and what works for one doesn't work for the other you know and i like how you said that you know people can say you know here's the rituals and when i say rituals i am going there religion spirituality and you said what people think and feel on the inside people can have religion they can go they can pray five times a day they could go to mass every sunday they can you know do shabbos every friday and, and light candles or whatnot but what are you really thinking about inside you know and this is a bunch of baloney or you know i really think this or but no one knows what you're actually thinking and feeling inside so it is that personal relationship of what works for you and what doesn't and that's a beautiful thing that's individuality you know, and, and I know you 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 talk about this a lot, Kelvin, of that our free will thinking. Yes. And, and 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 Jesus and everyone in that movement is very much for that. Yeah, free will, exactly. And to mm -hmm. and to give you guys a quick example, I see a question from Kim, and uh we'll get to your question in a second, Kim. 
But um, some of you know that I help people with death and dying issues. And I help people who are, you know, uh, <clears throat> who have fears about death and dying. Um, you know, I have my, my first book, Overcoming the Fear of Death and so forth. But one thing that I do for free uh, worldwide, and I've, and I've done this a number of times, um, is help people die it, when they're at that moment, literally, literally at that moment. And I've been in the room with them in some cases. And in one case, Sharon just reminded me of something you said, Sharon, of a woman who is a devout Catholic. I'm not a devout Catholic, okay? But I helped her look through her lens of being a devout Catholic in London, England. And so I'm in Los Angeles, California, those of you who don't know. And then um, I, I was on the phone with her. Her daughter found me online and and said her mom, the, can't, the doctors couldn't figure out how how she's hanging on given her poor health and how many how much you know painkillers it had in her. And yet she, her body was rallying and she wasn't able to speak. But I talked to the daughter and I found out what the mother's belief system was. She's a devout Catholic to the to the to the extent to Sharon's point. I mean, every day she went to church before every day she went to mass. She was I Irish, Irish, Roman Catholic. OK, and every day she went to church her whole life, except she would, if she was sick. And of course, she couldn't go now because she's been in the hospital, et cetera. And she was not able to communicate with with her daughter or me or anybody or the doctors she was she could open her eyes up but that was it she would sleep and open her eyes up but she couldn't communicate for the two weeks before the daughter reached out to me the daughter told me what her belief system was i spoke to the woman on the phone while the dog uh, the daughter held the speakerphone up to her mom's ear through her irish catholic lens but i'm just giving you this example in as in, in, to underscore what I mean when I say I'm not here to change people's belief system, I'm here to help people move forward in their lives, whatever that means, okay, through whatever lens. And then she, she, she died the next day. She, she, she said she whispered one word after I got off the phone. Her daughter texted me. She said her mom said, some somehow her mom spoke. She hadn't spoken or moved except her eyelids in two weeks. She said beautiful. She went into a deep sleep. Uh, the next day she left her body so um i get emotional even telling you this story but my, that, that just underscoring my point of what sharon's saying we're here to help people whatever wherever they're at so kim do you want to say this uh qu question um out loud to people that you put in the chat box to me sure um well i'm just curious because i was seeing something on the news about dinosaurs the other day <laughs> So I'm thinking that would be so amazing to see one of them alive. So <laughs> it just blows me away. Like, I'm so confused. I got so many. So there was dinosaurs on the earth and then people. I, I just like why, like to me, it's like, why was there dinosaurs and why did they go away? And then why people? And was, do you think people, it's Adam and Eve or how do you think we came here as people? Because they say <laughs> millions of years and stuff like. Right, right. Yeah, that's a that that's a tough question. That's a million. That's the ten million dollar question there, Kim. So here's my perspective on it. Okay, <clears throat> again, you're getting my opinion. This is Kelvin Chin's opinion on this. Okay, based on you know reading science and this that and the other thing and understanding spirituality and then having my own experiences on the other side. So this is like a collection. This is from all the collection of data. We'll call it that from different sources. Okay. Um, so I think that uh, humans have been on Earth for millions of years, as they, as whatever the, whatever they are, the scientists, the anthropologists, or whoever, the, whatever you call the ologists who say that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but wh 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 where where did we come from as humans? Is the is I think really your essential question, right? And, like was it Adam and Eve kind of thing, or yeah, was it was it Adam and Eve? Well, I think Adam and Eve is a story. I think that's a story that was made up because there's a lot of things in there that don't make logical sense. And so, as I said at the outset of today's classes, so we, I, I encourage people to look at things logically. And there's a lot of stories and myths that've been, you know, made up over the look at you know, <laughs> ancient, ancient Rome. There's a, there's the myth that where did 
where did Rome come from? It came from these two brothers fighting over each other, fighting with each other, Romulus and Remus. And no, 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 there's this place, there's a geographic, there's land and there's things growing on it and there's human beings there and they coalesce and they get into this thing we call a, you know, a, a, a little town that grew into a village. And that's Rome, okay? But the ancient legend is, it's like an Adam and Eve thing, except it's two fraternal brothers who happened to kill one and killed the, killed the other one. And that's where Rome came from. Eh. Anyway, so I think there's these all these kind of myths. But <clears throat> to, to your question, <clears throat> I don't necessarily think that I have been a human the whole time I've been in existence. And I think that may be true. This is a theory that I have, Kim. Okay, I'm just Kelvin Chin. <laughs> that, um, that, our soul is eternal. So when I refer to our soul, those of you who are in my six-part afterlife series, you know, we're going to talk about this in this last session. I saved that for the end. <clears throat> because I think that's what's eternal. There's this part of us that's eternal. There's no beginning, no end. It doesn't die. And it was there was no beginning to it. But that's I think that's where but that's not sorry. The, that's not the human part. Okay. The human part is an expression of that because I have memories of being an animal, Kim, right? I wasn't human. So what was I before I was human? I don't know. But I think, yes. I think my theory is that I think that we, we have been many, taken many forms, let's just say, okay? Well, I guess because you're taught as a human, there's always a beginning and an end. So then when you lay staring at the ceiling at 3 a.m., it's like, well, where did I begin? And, and when they say souls have always have been, well, the mind can't understand that because I guess the logic of it all, um, that doesn't logically compute. Um, and then I just, and then you think about space and they say galaxies and universes and this and this and this and this, and it goes forever. It's like, well, are we on a different planets or are we just right here? I just, like I always, do you think there's people on different planets, souls? Do you think, it just, it's so vast. My brain, I, I've got to get up and take something usually to get to sleep because it's overthinking. I just need the, I wish I had the answers because I'm just so curious about it all. Like, can, I wish we had the answers. <laughs> everything. Yeah, I love that. Can, you know, Calvin, I'm just Sharon, thinking, sorry, Kim. What if the beginning, middle, and end of Sharon Coyle ends in this matter, in this lifetime? But that's just one ending, you know? That's just one beginning, middle, end. But there's, like, can be, I think there's a saying, I think it's a yogic saying, like more, you know, 10,000 joys and sorrows. Maybe there's 10,000 or more, you know, endings and beginnings. You know, it's um, look at the relationships, you know, going through a divorce right now, beginning, middle, end, you know. Um, but I'm mean, I I very <laughs> right. I guess my logical brain's always where's the beginning, mm. you know, where's the very beginning? Mm. Wasn't there, didn't this, all this have to be a very be like it just if there, there might be no answer, and I don't know if I can handle that. Do you, do you, you know, I'm holding, I'm holding up a selenite crystal which i love so deeply where's the beginning well that's but it had to where's the form. beginning on it and to me it's like it had to form somewhere i like it just i cannot anytime i get an answer or something then i get another question it's like but then where did it form where did it this yeah well let me i'm going to give you an answer that's not going to be an answer but it's, <laughs> but it's going to it's going to lead you to an answer, all right? Okay. So um, I'll give you that first, and then I'll give you what what I can say about this because uh, there's only so much I can wrap my mind around this. Okay. So so the first part is George Hammond, who gave the 30th November talk. It, 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 it has written a, a book about this that's not published okay it was published and then it was taken out and they, he's going to re start republishing everything 
I, I can't remember how many books he's got, 12, 15 books, something like that. But one of them is relates to this idea of e what you're talking about, Kim, is this concept of eternity. All right. That's what you're talking about. That's why you can't get your mind around it, because eternity has no beginning and no end. And so well, how, how can you talk about that? OK, so the, I, 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 I talk about that at the beginning of the six of the uh, I, I mean I talk about that at the end of my I begin to talk about it is what I was trying to say <laughs> I begin to talk about it at the end of my six part series that you are in you're, you're in that class that so you'll see but the more complete understanding of this is in George's book that he's going to republish after he sometime after March this year I'm not sure when I'm not sure if he knows when yet, but he's going to he's going to have some seminal um, lectures this March. And I'll pub I'll send you guys emails about it, you know, you know in, 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 like this coming month, I guess, February. Um, so he's getting he's giving some public lectures on on, on, on stuff um, that's leading in this direction to your answer to your question, Kim. <laughs> that's why I said I was not going to give you the answer. Because I am not an expert in understanding all this stuff like he is. He's been thinking about this for somewhere close to four or 5,000 years. I don't know. Okay? So he's got a little head start on you and me, Kim. All right? <laughs> a little bit. All right. So, but here's the, here's what, here's the part that I can get my mind around that uh, dovetails perfectly in with what Sharon said when Sharon rate, or showed us or selenite crystal okay <laughs> the the analogy kim is that is is that it's like that the universe we're talking to say it say the universe is like one of those snow globes right you know the snow globes a little plastic fake snow in it you shake them up and then the snow goes over there and it kind of lands again it's like imagine the universe george has said to me imagine the universe is like a ginormous snow globe. and it's just and it's like and and it and it's not a physical thing because you know we analogies you have to whenever you do an analogies you have to give a physical thing because you're talking about abstract concepts and that's what the analogy does is it gives a physical form to an abstract concept that's what an analogy is okay so y y the analogy breaks down obviously because it's not a physical form of the universe it's it's it's, it's um it's energetic but Imagine, just back to the analogy, Kim, um, snow globe, tons of little, like, little, and all of those little pieces of snow are you and me and every being in the universe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and, 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 and it can get rearranged. It, it includes the planets, includes, it's not just minds, consciousness, it's, it's everything, it's, and it can get rearranged because you shake it up, okay? And so... Um, that's the general concept. Now, how you get your mind around the essence of your question, Kim, in terms of the beginning and end thing, that's the, you know, that's what I cannot help you with. <laughs> the, the essence of the, the, the last thing you said, okay? It's just, it is what it is. It's, it's like, so... Um, there is no beginning, no end. So let me tell you, say to you this way. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll say it, and then we'll go to the next person's question in a second because this is so abstract. the The way I can look at this from the reverse side, if you if you want to think about it this way, um, is that if if there was a beginning and end, and things were it were able to be figured out in that way, then uh, the concept of entropy would, 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 would dominate. Now, do you know what entropy is in physics? People know ent entropy means chaos. It's, a, it's like if you left your house right now, you died, you left your house and nobody went into your house for the next thousand years, what would they come back and find? A bunch of dust and probably some plastic that would still be around after a thousand. 
right? <laughs> but but all the glass probably would have been broken or or turned into dust and crumbled, right? Even the, even some of the a lot of the hard objects, the wood would be dust in a thousand years or five thousand years, right? In other words, entropy. That's and that's what entropy means. It's if you just leave everything, everything just kind of goes to chaos, and or or if you um, you 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 look at a society, and if you just had zero social rules, it would be anarchy, right? Because chaos would would ensue. So that's what entropy. Is. So, but but we don't. We what we see in the universe is that when a mind is a conscious mind, whether it's a beaver or a human, it can change the entropic environment, the, the environment that is would normally just be entropic. So let's use a beaver, for example. What would normally happen? All the trees would fall and the trees would fall and the trees would fall and some of them would fall over the river and some of them would float down the river and some would do this and this and that. What can a beaver do? Beaver can actually proactively go over to a tree, gnaw it down, bring the trees down, bring, drag the trees over and create a dam across the river that they can then do whatever they do in the pond or wherever they go, they go fishing. I don't know what they're doing. You know, I, I, this is this is my this is where my my knowledge of beavers ends, just uh, FYI. <laughs> So it's like, but you know, but see, that's that's an example of a mind, a consciousness, doing anti-entropic things. So our universe has minds in it. To answer your question, yes, on other planets too. I have a memory. It's going to be in my third book that I'm writing about. A brief memory I have of being on another planet. So, okay, alive on another planet. So, yeah, whatever planet you are in the universe. And yet those minds can do things like a beaver can do. I'm just picking on beavers. I don't know why. But, you know, you can do anti-entropic things. That's, 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 that, that, that changes the, 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 the discourse. And then, again, how that ties into this concept of eternity and is there a beginning and an end and all this. I, I, have, to, I, have, to, I have to X out, sorry. That's that's George's book that, that ties all that together. Okay, but this, and Kelvin, now that you've gotten into sciency, yeah, law of physics, energy yeah. cannot be created nor destroyed, and we are energy. Thank you. Yes, right. First law of thermodynamics. So, if if we do believe that we. Our, our mind or something continues, which I call a mind, soul, consciousness, spirit, same thing. <laughs> and what is it? It's energy. It's not biological. The biological thing has died, right? Tragically, like Ron and I were talking about earlier, our, 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 our cousin Victor tragically died recently, literally, very recently. That was last week, very recently. His consciousness, his spirit continues after he's biologically died has died, just like all of us will, okay? That's what Sharon's talking about. Energy continues. Our mind is energy, cannot be created nor destroyed. Therefore, it has no beginning, no end. The tough question, Kim. Good question. Really good question. <laughs> I tough. devote it lots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions, folks? Go ahead. Anybody else? Just take yourself off mute. Go ahead. Feel free. Anybody? Let's talk about free will. Let me just talk about free will a little bit here. Can I just ask one more thing then if nobody right, was jumping in for a second? No, no, you go, go ahead. Do you, think, do you think we'll ever get to a point on this earth? Because like I know a lot of people that have lost children. And to me, I've witnessed the like, it's so sad here. I, I have a hard time enjoying life because I see so much sadness, whether it's what's happening in Ukraine or here or there. Do you think we'll ever get to a point that we're so sure that we won't be as sad when people pass? We'll learn to more celebrate them going back home or it's do you think really, we'll ever get that? It's a really good question, Kim. It's a really heartfelt, it's a heartfelt question because I know you 
and it's a really good question. Um, it, 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 it's, I hope so. That's, that's my hope. That's why I do what I do is, is for people to get more comfortable with the, with the, with, with the dying process and the, and the, the, in, in the, in, and the losing the loved one process, at least from an understanding standpoint, we can never, ever get used to the losing the loved one process from a heart standpoint, right? From a grieving standpoint. But to the extent that I can help from an understanding that they're okay, that they're not suffering, uh, that they're they're not physically in pain anymore, that they, they're not being punished for any yeah. for what they did or how they died or whatever, especially those who have taken their own lives. There's this whole religious thing, which is completely wrong about, you know, making people feel guilty and whatever about that. No, that's not correct. So to the extent that I can help mitigate and relieve that kind of pain and suffering for those who are still here, who those are the folks you're talking about. Yes, I, I hope, I hope, I hope we can continue to do that will to answer your question will it ever be on the road you know a, a world where people are more i hope so but who knows kim because it comes back to this free will point that we just that i just started to say and um i'm gonna uh, i i see you want to share something sharon in a sec but the, yeah. the one thing about free will is that we don't know kim we can't really answer your question really because <laughs> There's everybody's free will is always at play. And some people may just not be so interested in the same things you and I are interested in, Kim, in that regard. Right? Well, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. I think some people enjoy suffering, so it's they don't seem to ever want to come out of it. It's easier for them to stay in that suffering, but. Yeah, for some people it is, and it's and it's a sad thought. Uh, but it's here's a perspective on this. It's a it's it's an experience that that hypothetical person or people you're talking about, Kim. Uh, it's a perspective that they've developed for many many lifetimes. That's not a new thing. If they have, if somebody who really enjoys suffering and feels like they oh, they're they, they're, they're, they, they can't do anything about it and so forth. That's somebody who's been enslaved a long time and, 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 has, found, has, and has not yet found their power within. That's a tough, and, and, it's, and it's, it's sad. It's sad. Do you think someone can die of a broken heart? Like Lisa Marie yes. Presley, her son. Yes. My first thought was before I even heard how she passed, I thought, oh, she died of a broken heart. It just see, because yeah. like I said, I've known a lot of people to lose their children. Um, but yeah, I just, do you think we can will ourselves to leave here without physically Absolutely. committing suicide? Absolutely, yes. No question about it. Our mind is more powerful than we realize. That's the one of my messages in all of my classes, right? We don't realize how powerful our, we think our mind is like this little, I'm making a decision to pick this glass up and drink it. <laughs> we think that's all our mind is. Oh, I, I, my mind, you know, thinks and does, makes decisions. No. That's, that is an important part of our mind when we're driving a car or when we're drinking water or we're giving a lecture. Okay, fine. But our mind is vast. It's huge. And yes, it has that power. And it has that power too, Kim. Like you said, look, I'll tell you a quick story. Some of you may, some of you know my friend Jerry, Jerry Jarvis. And um, Tom, you didn't know him, but you and I learned TM together, Tom, back in 1970. And Jerry was the national leader of the TM organization in the U.S. then. <clears throat> and tragically, Jerry died finally, you know, in 2018. Uh, you know, I say finally. He was 84, year, 85 years old. And so at least he was, you know, he, you know, he 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 was in, in more advanced age. But you know, it's it's tragic because I I miss Jerry dearly. But his wife, to to this point, Kim, when Jerry died. I mean, Debbie and Jerry were together since I think they told me they were 18 years old. Wow. And, and Debbie was, maybe she was 82 or something like that. Uh, Jerry was 84, 85. You know, <clears throat> and when we heard, when Jerry died, we all said, oh, we, you know, 
we who knew them well, um, they gave Debbie six months and she died two months later. Okay. You know, I went and saw her. I held her hand after he died. I sat on the edge of her bed and I getting a little emotional. I held, held her hand, you know, and she just, she was just beside herself. She says, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, De Debbie, you know, everybody loves you. You stay here as long as you want, but whenever you're ready, you can go. You go hang with Jerry. Two months. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, quick story on them, how close they were. They met, they worked <laughs> at the Congressional Record in Washington, D.C. They were, they were right, uh, you know, writing they were you know authoring articles for the congressional record which was you know a, a, you know it's a I, I think they i don't know it's published daily or weekly or whatever to congress you know and then you can get copies of it if you go online anyway they were uh, you know right out of college and um back then you know sitting in these metal desks and they were like half a dozen people in one little room you know at their own little desk but you don't have any privacy there you know and um and it was it was against the the the, the uh, company rule, the office rules, the agency rules, government agency uh, rules to date each other. You couldn't do that. So what they did was they would write each other love notes. This is you know they came in. This is Jerry and Debbie when they're 19, 20 years old, 18 years, 20, 21 years old. They're writing notes to each other, crumpling them up, throwing them in the wastebasket, <laughs> and then the other one would go <laughs> later sneak it out and go. And they get love notes and they go, and then they're like, you know, yeah, let's go have lunch. And so they have to have lunch together really far away from Capitol Hill because uh, in DC, because, you know, they didn't want to be seen. And that's how they met. So uh, yeah. that would be tough. close. They were, Kim. That's why I tell you that story. And for how long, you know? So, yes. Well, that's like the queen. I figured she wasn't going to last very long after being with him for 70 years. I didn't think she would live very much longer after him. I, Right, 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 right. And then there's my mom who had lung cancer stage four seven years ago. And they said, well, you know, kind of you got this. And now we're seven years later and the doctor's like, and my mom's like, no, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks for sharing that. Uh, before we go to Amy, uh, Sharon, did you have something you wanted to share? <clears throat> I just wanted to um, say to Kim, because um, you're probably like, who is this? I actually, um, I, I am a social I value worker. everyone's opinion. Yeah, oh, okay. that's so sweet. That is so sweet. I work for hospice. And yes, oh, I wow. have, on the bereavement end of it, and I have um, not only seen and heard um, the broken heart syndrome. So that that is that is a true thing. That is a true well, thing. Bless you for what you do. That's a. Oh, and then amazing. I heard when you were asking your question of, you know, is there ever going to be not the sadness with, you know, the loss of someone. And then it kind of changed from sadness to the pain and suffering. And I think there's a distinction to be made there because I think that sadness is okay. That's part of normal and natural process of loss. Not, not necessarily that heavy pain and suffering. And I know that Calvin talks about that he feels sad about the loss of his mom from time to time. Very normal and natural. So that yeah. distinction between the sadness and then that when it turns into that complete, you know, pain and, and suffering, inability to move forward, you know, with the grief. Yeah, it's a beautiful distinction there because a lot of times people hear the word grief and they only associate that with the sadness part. And to me, um, <clears throat> I will always be grieving the loss of my mother because I'm always going to be sad about not being with her physically here on planet Earth since 1982 when my mom died suddenly. Um, that said, I've obviously been able to move forward in my life um, because... Uh, as Sharon said, I don't have the pain and the suffering from it like I did when immediately when she died. Um, the phrase I sometimes use, you'll hear me use sometimes in my grief talks is, I don't feel overwhelmed by it anymore. I can, I can function, I can move forward. I, I haven't lost myself in that sadness is another way of looking 
at it. But essentially, but but uh, yeah, absolutely, it's very natural to feel that way initially. Yeah, Amy, do you want? Why don't you, can, Amy? Can you take yourself off mute and ask the question? And if you can, if you want to go on camera, you can go on camera because I have this on um, speaker so that otherwise, if you don't have to, but otherwise, they just see your on the recording. They'll just see your name. <laughs> Amy, are you there? Amy, Amy, Amy. Maybe she stepped away. Let's see. Teresa, do you want to ask your question? The one I put in the chat? Yes, or any other, any question. <laughs> the way you pick any any of them. Go ahead. Ask the one on the chat or you ask anything. Go ahead. Well, I, I uh, actually, I'm an animal communicator and... Um, but even though I am, I still have trouble with being exceedingly sad when animals die. Um, and I want to know what you thought about not fearing animals' deaths, which is big for me. <laughs> yeah, well, again, it's, are you wondering what happens to them? They go to the same place we do, if you want to call it a place. Yeah, the same thing happens to them when they die. as we, and, 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 and we can still see the animals who we have a connection with soul-wise, they have souls. First of all, just to be clear, you know, animals have souls just like we do. It's, they're, they're no different. They have different biological bodies, et cetera, et cetera, obviously. But they're the same as we are from a consciousness standpoint. Um, <clears throat> not only that, but there are some animals, you could argue, that are more self-aware than some humans. It's, animals are not all stupid or unconscious i'm gonna mute um i'm not sure who's rattling around but um <clears throat> i just muted everybody you can take yourself off mute Teresa, if you want to ask more um <clears throat> so um my my dog uh has visited me and my daughter since my dog died and my dog died in 1990, four years before my daughter was born. You follow that? So she didn't even know my dog, okay? And one morning she woke up, this was when she was five years old, she's 28 years old now. And uh, she just told us this, my, she told her mom and me this recently for like six years ago when she was in at university. But she thought, oh, no big deal. Cause we, we talk about death and dying in our household. You know, my kids are like, hey, okay, fine. You know? So, but she just told us recently that she woke up evidently uh, right after my dad died in 1999 uh, and saw my dad and my mom at the foot of the bed and my dog sleeping with his head on my ankle like this. This is my foot. Okay. Underneath the covers and his head was he would do this he my golden retriever dog shogun he would his name was shogun he would put his head his head rest his head so he was like physically touching me a little bit while i slept okay and he, not to not to disturb me she didn't know that that's the way he slept but my that's what she you know she said she told us i said wow like she didn't even know that she, i didn't have pictures around the house or whatever my dog or whatever so we're very, you know, yes, we can communicate with them and they, they're there. I've had a friend of mine, I helped a friend of mine's cat transition um, in Austin, Texas a few years ago. And he came and visited me, Sterling came and visited me like a few days after he died and let, let his, to let his mom know he was okay. I heard him meowing in my apartment. I'm alone in my apartment, except... He was meowing at the foot of my bed. So, um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. We, 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 you know, we, you know, we, we, we lose uh, loved ones and it doesn't matter if they're animals. Look, I, I have a, one of my students in the UK is, you know, it's, it's a very deep, she shares, she shares what you, what you said, Teresa. That, that deep connection with animals and um she takes in you know animals from the shelter etc cetera, etc cetera, and she you know nurtures them etc and but you know when they die it's just it's really hard for her really really hard amy are you back yet 
Are you back to answer your question, Amy? Um, <laughs> Sharon, I see this. Let's see. Debbie, 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 yes, I see your hand. Hello, how are you doing? I'm great. If do you want do you want to turn your camera on or not? You don't have to. No, because I got um, bad hair right this second, but oh, bad hair. Oh, I have I have bad hair too. That's why I shave it. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was chic for women because my head would be bald too. Believe uh, me. I'm not I'm not suggesting that you shave, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so I just wanted to share a couple things. I'm in Anne Marie's group, so I lost my son to suicide. Three one four. Oh, hold on. Six eight zero eight nine three one. Hold on. Somebody is. Uh, I gotta. I gotta mute this. Mute everybody. I gotta mute somebody. Somebody is talking there. Somebody was giving out their phone number to somebody. Yeah. When you come on, you're supposed to. You're supposed to stay on mute. It's autom You're automatically muted when you come on. Don't take yourself off mute unless you have something to say. All right. Uh, Debbie, go ahead. Say again. Yeah, Debbie, you were saying that. You're in the same. You have to unmute yourself now because I just muted everybody. I think Eduardo was talking. Um, okay, so I'm in Anne Marie's group. I lost my son to suicide six years ago, and I do see women that are trapped in their group, um, in their grief, and men that kind of become part of the story, and they feel like, you know, that ties them to their person, and that's kind of their connection. Whereas most of the people that I see that are really doing the hard healing work and making a difference um, and have meaning in their lives and joy and things like that. Um, they still cry and have bad days and all that. Obviously it's our kids, but we just push forward, you know? And um, so I started like, first off, I just got readings and then I started like, doing workshops here and there and then taking classes here and there and two years in the last two years I've been taking classes to be a psychic medium mostly medium you know but and an evidential one of course and to help other brave parents because I got a reading a year after my son did that and it made such a difference and um over Christmas I read like 30 bereaved moms but I just want to say that I didn't have any, any experience as a kid, you know, nothing. I didn't have much of a religious foundation, you know, really per se, a little tiny bit of Christian, but they wouldn't take us. They'd like set us on a little bus for a while. So, which is good really, because I didn't have all that religious, you know, stuff in my head, but I just opened myself up to it and you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm taking a course now where, I mean, I just read two people and got two readings, but um, one day, like now I can literally, I started out like one, every day I would wake up and say, he's dead, he killed himself. You know what I mean? First thought. And then one day I just heard him say, I'm not dead. And I was like, oh shit, now I'm either schizophrenic or he's talking to me in my head. So I was like, you need to say, call me mom so I know who's who because this is crazy and and then one that night I started like feeling him before I was going to sleep at the foot of the bed like you say and then this is a funny thing my um he actually played a joke on me was touching me for like a couple nights and I'm thinking somebody's dying something's going on here I'm dying and then literally he knocked and scratched underneath my pillow like two separate times and I would like lift it up and looked under my pillow for like an animal. I was like freaking out, not enough to be really scared. You know what I mean? But then I realized it was actually him playing a practical joke, which he was famous for. But then one day I had a medium tell me that my, I'm like an animal person too, like that. And this lady told me your dog, you're going to feel your dog. Um, and I was like, really? And she's like, yeah. So months went by. I forgot what she even said this. And then I was at my daughter's out of state in a little single bed, you know, alone, because I usually sleep with my dog and my husband. And believe it or not, I felt my dog jump on my bed and run around like a little puppy. And she had died of cancer at like 12 years old. And so there is 100% 
truth behind every word that you're saying, in my opinion. I don't know about past lives, but one last thing I will tell you is that one day I was complaining to my friend. I said, when I was 17 years old, I lost my mother. You think I could have got a cardinal or signs or some afterlife communication back then? That would have helped me with my son's passing 20, 40 years later or whatever it was. So then one day I got like not long after I my mother came to me and she was like, I've been mothering you your whole life. And I was like, whoa. And she said, um, and then she made me remember when I heard in my head, slow down, you're going to be in an accident right before a lady pulled out in front of me and a man was killed. Um, so she's like literally has saved my life from the other side. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. So that's all I have to say. I don't really have a question for you. Yeah, that's, that, that's great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, <clears throat> Thanks for sharing that. Um, You're welcome. Here's the thing. You mentioned something that reminded me of something before I open up to somebody else's question here. Is that um, I, 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 one of my friends died tragically. He had heart uh, failure. Um, and uh, he was in bed with his wife and he was adjusting his CPAP thing, you know, the, the, some people wear at night to breathe and so on. And so, on. And so um, <clears throat> he was adjusting the mask, his oxygen mask. And she woke up and she said, everything okay? He goes, yeah. And um, he adjusted it and then he died. That That's how quickly. So she was awake. So the good thing was that she was with him physically and awake the moment he passed, tragically. Really good guy, my buddy Phil and um friends since the 70s and uh taught meditation together etc cetera, etc cetera. um back then anyway and uh stayed in touch all these years all these decades after he died maybe a month or two some of you who've taken my meditation class you know i meditate with you when you know we meditate together i actually close my eyes and meditate i'm not sitting here reading the newspaper or something I, I actually close my eyes I'm meditating with you guys and as you guys know and if any of you haven't taken my class or do some other form of meditation you should always take a rest period after you meditate if your teacher hasn't told you that eh, tell your teacher that they should be telling their students to take a rest period after it's really really important so I, I went and I laid down you don't have to lie down but you know I always like to lie down if I can if it's convenient so I, I, I meditated with one of you guys, one of my meditation students, and I laid down afterwards like I usually do. And when I'm doing that, I'm, I'm meditating with you. I have my phone on vibrate, obviously, so I don't get any phone calls during our meditation together. And I have, uh, the, so the phone is on vibrate, and um, I put the phone on mute so that if I get a text message or something like that, it sneaks through you're not hearing the, any buzzing or vibrating or whatever and so i put it on mute also and i go lie down to rest so you and i are resting you're across the world wherever you are and i'm here in my room and i'm lying down resting during the rest period my phone this is an iphone my iphone goes like this and it's on vibrate okay my iphone goes like this that 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 there is no setting of notifications in an iphone that can do that there is none and then and then and it was perfect electronic it wasn't like it, it wasn't the, the rhythm wasn't a little off it was like perfect electronic somebody electronically did this perfectly it's as if the phone is programmed to do that 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 and 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 so i my immediate thought was phil because like you said you know phil was a really you know he was like a real mischievous guy you know we we teased each other we joked all the time we just we would cry laughing you know all the time phil and i and 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 and, and then i said phil is that you 
and immediately the phone again went that 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 and that was phil communicating with me through the iphone from the other side having just gone over maybe a couple months earlier earth years right so yeah Yes, all kinds of this cross communication can happen. And why, Debbie, you didn't get communications earlier from whoever that loved one was earlier? Who knows? We can't tell. Maybe you were uh, busy and they were busy and so forth. I've had communications come through me to some friends. Uh, one came through through a, a brother. Through like I talk about it in this book here, my first book. Um, and and he'd been dead in earth years for 16 years and yet in his note before he died to his sister who was very very close with my my i was friends with his sister uh, he told her he was going to get in touch with her as soon as he could to let her know he was okay but the experience of time on the other side is different from here that's the other thing we can talk about if nobody has any other questions here um other questions go ahead speak up i just wanted to make a comment yes because i know we're coming in here for the 30th november yes Q&A. um would it be because it's been brought up you know a few times with mm -hmm. you know that what happens when our loved ones cross over or fur babies cross over um and that over, how do we overcome the fear of death and that also was one of the messages, you know, with the, let's just call it as it is, the Jesus project of overcoming the fear of death with the resurrection. And I mean, we call, you know, those, I guess, in the Christian Catholic tradition, resurrection, just, um, I guess, Jesus would call it, hey, I was just saying hello to my friends, you know, <laughs> I was saying hi to Mary Mags and, you know, just, you know, saying hi to everyone else. And then he, you know, appeared to everyone else, just like your little fur baby appeared to you, Calvin. And just like, as I was hearing, um, you know, uh, Debbie, her, 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 um, you know, her son, you know, was, was saying hello. And that's just, um, it, it wasn't a special thing. Like that was just happening with him. That that's a possibility for all of us, you know, including our fur babies. Yes. Yes. I was wondering if you wanted to touch upon that. Yes, no, absolutely. And 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 I'm glad you raised the uh Jesus Project issue again because Amy asked a question earlier, and I'm gonna weave together with what you were just saying. Amy asked earlier um <clears throat> um about the 20th, uh, about the 30th November 2014 talk. Um <clears throat> she was asking, <clears throat> excuse me about Jesus and Jehovah, uh, that in that talk, Jesus and Jehovah say they don't want us to think of them as God, etc. cetera. Uh, who are they? Are they just regular people who were trying to let people know about the afterlife? Um, that was Amy's question. It's a good question, Amy. So again, like we said earlier, if people really still feel um, more comfortable with thinking about of, of Jesus and Jehovah, or whoever on the other side as God, Allah, Yahweh, et cetera, depending on what uh, tradition and culture you come from, that's fine. They don't have a problem with it, but they don't view themselves that way. That's what they were saying and reminding us in the 30th November talk in 2014. But um, who are they? They're personalities, Amy, just like you and I have a personality, Sharon, Debbie, Tom, and so forth. All of you have personalities. We we all have personalities that are unique to each of us. That's what I say. Personality, our soul, our spirit, our consciousness. Are the um, what I talk about in, the, in my new book that I'm writing, finishing right now. I talk about them as traits, personality traits that we each have, that we each are born with, and that my experience, and as I elucidate in my book over the last six thousand years. I've noticed these traits tend to continue over long, long periods of time. So um, just like Jesus and Jehovah and Shankara and these other members of what 
they refer to themselves as the movement, meaning a group of spiritual leaders trying to help move things along in a positive direction, uh, influence. They can't force, but the influence, um, you know, the choices of, of, of us on here, humanity on earth. Um, the, 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 the idea was that um, uh, they have their personalities and how their personalities are expressed through those, through their choices uh, of, uh, and actions in terms of influencing us are unique. So for example, those of us who remember being with Jesus, Jesus is a very loving personality, a very empathic personality, very sharp, very wise, very intelligent, great sense of humor and all that. But one thing that's override, kind of an overriding, maybe too strong a word, too, but, but very, 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 very um, obvious and, and very apparent with his personality is how he embraced people and accepted them for who they were. That's to me what love is, and that's how he's defined to us what love is. It's accepting the other person for who they are, not who you wish they were. That's like really um, dominant is the word in his personality. John the Baptist, dominant in his personality. John the Baptist, who was later, who was previously a, the prophet Elijah, and then later, more recently in 20th century, was Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. John the Baptist personality, much more righteous and very passionate uh almost righteous indignation uh kind of trait in his in his in his in his character in his personality uh so very different personality from jesus so their personalities very popular powerful personalities uh for sure amy um but personalities nevertheless and they want us to view themselves uh, in relation to us is more of like friends that Jehovah and Jesus, John the Baptist, Buddha, um, Swami Brahmananda, uh, you know, pick a guru or some spiritual leader, uh, it, it, view the Buddha, for example, more as their friends than as worshiping them as divinity, or to use the word Sharon reminded us of, gurus not the guru disciple and not the divinity relationship that we have gotten used to they want us to view them more as their friends yeah yes kelvin yeah, yeah sure go uh why don't you yeah you want to go lorraine and i'll go to ron go ahead lorraine. okay yes please um that's they don't want us to view them like that but I mean, our grandparents instilled in our head, that's who you're going to pray to. You know, you ask them to help you. They're there for you. So then what do you do? Did you go with what you, what we said always at the beginning, right? Right. You, but, you go with what you feel is comfortable, not what your grandparents, right. your grandparents or your great grandparents or your parents told you. What do you feel comfortable with? Uh, look, I, my parents, my father, until my father died, my, my, I thought he thought he was, I was crazy, you know, like what, you know, after my past life, what, you know, Ron knew my dad, Ron, Ron's my cousin, right? Ron knew my dad. My dad was like an engineer, one, his way or the highway. And his belief system was you die, you throw me in the box, put the dirt on me. I'm done. That was the quote that my dad said. I heard him say it a hundred or 200 or 300 or 500 times in my life, you know, when, before he died and then he died and then he started communicating with us, <laughs> even communicated with a client of mine who I've never met in Ohio. My dad came to him. It's like, so you go with what you think and, and feel is appropriate for you, Lorraine. That's the bottom line, you know? Okay. I, yeah. I just don't, you know, I mean, if they don't want us to view them that way, then we should. No, they, they, they don't, that's that's the way Amy framed it, uh, and it's not incorrect. But I would reframe it a little more gently. I would say they're not encouraging us. They're right. not encouraging us to view them that way. They're totally okay if we view them that way. Any of us view them that way, they're okay with that, right? They're, but they're okay. not encouraging that. Whereas if you, you know, I look call a spade a spade and, and jehovah's okay with me saying this 
uh, you know, back in, in, in the Old Testament days, whether that was, you know, Sharon knows the Bible backwards and forwards. I do not. But so, Sharon, you can correct me if I'm off on this, but let's like 4,000 years ago, whatever it was, Jehovah was more, let's say, permissive <laughs> in allowing people and maybe slightly encouraging people <laughs> to think of him in the way that you're talking about, Lorraine. Right? Yeah, he's changed his mind on this and he's more open. And the reason he is, this is a very, very important point to understand. And he's made this very clear to me that he wants me and others, not just me personally, I mean, any of you, we're seeds, okay? I'm a seed, you're a seed. I'm just sharing seed thoughts with you. If they resonate, share it with others. But he's made it clear to some of us that he wants it known that he became clearer in his own mind about the obedience. We'll use the word obedience, Lorraine, okay? The, the notion of be obedient to God notion and or obedient to Jehovah, Allah, Yahweh, however, you know, whatever culture uh, speaks to you, you know, people use different, you know, names for that personality. Um, he, what became clear to him more recently in the last several ye earth years is how that, that allowing that obedience, and maybe even he encouraged it a little bit, Lorraine, you know, what, three, 4,000 years ago, whatever it was, um, led people down the road to indirectly, without him intending this, an unintended consequence, as they say, was people potentially being, allowing themselves to be abused by abusive people. Because obedience means devotion. And, and, and if you have blind devotion, which is not what they're, he was encouraging, but people will go down that route, and you've seen this, Lorraine, I'm sure, uh, in, 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 your, in religious communities, where people are blindly devoted and they'll do whatever a, a god tells them, whether the god is somebody in a church, or their god is their husband, or their god is their boss at work. You know, God, I'm putting gods in quotes here, right? You know what I mean? They're the, the, the authority figure, okay? They blindly follow whatever, they, that, then that, they could be abused by that person if that God figure, the authority figure, is not a nice person, is a cruel person, right? And so um, he saw, he has seen that. Now, he is not a cruel person. So I, know, I don't have concerns about Jehovah, but Jehovah has concerns and neither does Jehovah concerns about himself, but Jehovah has concerns about us, we who follow blindly others, we can we we might lose our discernment and then follow un, unintentionally be follow an abusive spouse, right? Marry an abusive spouse and then think, oh, but I'm in this marriage and I have to be honorable and devoted to my husband because that's the culture that I come from or the belief system I come from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You see, you see how that cascades, Lorraine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it leads to enslavement and potential abuse. So it's like, no, he said no. So he's emphasizing since 30th November, this notion of free will, we need to make our, you know, not follow others blindly, listen and be influenced and be taught by people that's okay. I'm a teacher, but I do not want you to follow me blindly, Lorraine, right? I want you to think. That's why I say that at the outset, right? Okay? Think for okay. yourself. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. It's a great question. It's a really important. Yeah, I'm going to go to Ron and then uh, Harpo, uh, Ron and Harpo or Sharon. So it, was, it was next. I'm not sure. Go ahead. Okay. Thank Ron. you. Yes. So I just... Um... Thinking about, you know, these four major traditions from that 30th uh, November talk. And here uh, in my little meditation group, we threw the I Ching. And when we do the I Ching, we're asking the question to the sage or whoever. And so my question to you is, maybe the sage could be from Jehovah or Jesus or, you know, the 
uh, Vedic uh, traditions or whatever. But uh, anyway, I'm just wanting to throw that concept out. Who are we connecting to when we're asking the I Ching for guidance? It's a really good question, Ron. The bottom line is, I don't know, but the bottom, bottom, more important line is this, maybe the top line. <laughs> the top line is we need to discern and see if whatever information we get makes sense to us and apply it accordingly or not, depending if it doesn't. And so to me, the source matters less than the information. And I had that conversation with George on day two of him telling me that he had this download. My question to George the next morning, so this for those of you who don't know the history, uh, and I, I, I'm going to go to you next, Sharon uh, Coyle, and then, uh, then Harpo and then Sharon Shigoyan. Um, but the, the, the quick uh, side note on this, is when George got the download from the other side, it was a 90 minute download that then eventually turned in the 11 months later into this 30th November talk. Um, he called me, I was the first one he called after he got this download and he told me this. And then the next morning after we both slept, I woke up and the first thing I asked him was basically your question, Ron. <laughs> it's basically, a, I said your question to, right? I, in paraphrase, your question to, to George, okay? And, uh, and, and, we, and we both agreed that even if we weren't sure, we assess the information and the information seemed to make sense to us and we would go forward with the request to share this. So that's, uh, that's how objective, that's how uh, skeptical, or I don't know, questioning, whatever you want to call it, we, George and I, we both are, as it relates to anything, uh, this side or the other side for that matter, okay? So the, I suggest that, that you look through that lens also, because there's nothing wrong with what you're doing, Ron, the I Ching, tarot cards, people learn to tarot cards. Go to a medium, whatever. It's like, whatever. I, I am not, I don't throw water on any of that stuff, but discern. That's that I'm, I'm the, I, I, that's all I, I suggest is that always discern and then you decide, right? Right. And if the, you know, the, whoever the being says that there are, and if you go to a medium different from I Ching, I know, but you know, uh, you know, they say, well, I'm so-and-so. Okay, fine. Okay, what do you got to say? <laughs> That's what I started saying in 1986 when they come to me. I was like, hey, you call yourself whatever you want. What do you got to say to me? You know, is it useful for me or not? You know, and it wasn't. I just, yeah. yeah. Sharon uh, Coyle. I'll go to Sharon Coyle first. I have such a quick comment because I know we all have our communications. Um, yeah. For me personally, my communication I know it's like, um, I know that, who was it, um, forgetting uh, the, the woman who, uh, I believe it was Lorraine, you know, uh, does, you yeah. know, he want us to think of it this way or that way. And they can only speak to really something strongly that uh, for Jesus, you know, he really, really doesn't mind you calling him anything, but really, really doesn't like this. But it's okay with this. That's a <laughs> really like this. It really is very painful. It's very painful for him. I'm, I'm being very serious here, but yeah. can kind of sort of tolerate that. And I'll have Kelvin talk about that because I know he had the same communication with him. It's really painful for those who are around him to see that. And it's very painful for him. Yes. It's a beautiful point, Sharon. It's a good point, and it's a point that. I'm sure Jesus appreciates your raising. And um, so a little aside, there were many things that George was, messages that were given to him that he chose not to say. And he and I decided in conversation, we had multiple conversations with these spiritual leaders, Jesus, Jehovah, Shankara, uh, you know, the, the list, you know, of, 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 of a, a bunch of them. Um, John the Baptist, etc. Um, before the talk, and we 
decided collectively not to put certain things in. This is one of the things we decided not to put in, what Sharon just raised. But Jesus has asked me to talk about it more publicly now. Um, we didn't want to put it in to George's talk because we thought it would be a little bit too controversial. Um, because what he wanted George to say was that he wanted everybody to take down their cross, their crucifixes. Uh, so we're talking how many crucifixes there are probably in the world. I don't know, 100 million. <laughs> That's 100 million people would be really ticked off. So I said, George, we're not putting that in the talk. That is not going in the talk. George said, yeah, you're right. And then we talked to Jesus and he said, yeah, okay, fine. But he's asked me to bring it up from time to time. And it, 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 what's the point? His point was that um, seeing himself around the world reminds on the cross reminds him of a terribly painful, both physically and emotionally painful experience. He had a physical, biological body. You think hammering spikes into somebody's hands and feet and putting a crown of thorns on their head and making them carry this. I don't know how much, you know, you know, a 75 pound, a 100 pound weight on your shoulders through this, through the city is a pleasant experience. No. And, and Paul derailed the teaching and made this horrific experience into this crucifixion. Oh, you get rid of all your sins. That, that Paul made that up. Okay. That was a Paul created thing it has nothing to do with, nothing to do with Jesus's teachings. All right. If you have any questions about that, you can ask me here or next month or whatever. But I'm just going to leave that at that. It was a morbid thing. Yeah, morbid and sad, as Sharon said here. It's terrible. So the and he understands that there's, you know, that that connection to the cross. So he's yes. okay. He's okay with that. He's compromised. Oh, don't take them all down. But please, the thorns, the blood, the nails, right. the the dead body. Please. It's right. it's really painful for those right. who are there and for him especially. Exactly. So the plain cross he's okay with, the bleeding, the blood, the one, all those horrific ones. See, because that's Paul. It, it, it also underscores Paul's teaching. It, it was not a good Friday. Yeah, exactly. It was not a good Friday. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Thanks. Nothing good about that Friday. Exactly. And it was part of it kind of reinforces Paul's teaching the blood and all that one. That one does the, the, the crucifix with all the blood because Paul's whole thing was that Jesus suffered, suffered for you. And that appeals to people when they're in a bad state. I understand that, but it's a terrible message. It's a terrible message. And it, and it it's also false. Didn't happen. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a good point. The, the, the analogy that Jesus shared with us that he wanted George to say that George decided not to say in the 30th November talk, Jesus said, for all you out there who are mothers or fathers of children, would you like it if you, if you had dozens of pictures on your mantle over your fireplace of the baby crowning as you were giving natural childbirth, as the baby's crowning, and the look of the mother's face as that's happening, the agony and the pain on the face of the mother as that's happening. Yes, and it doesn't even have to be the baby. It could be, you know, our loved ones who have crossed over. Are we going to put pictures of them i have a picture of my grandfather i don't have a picture of of my grandfather in his last moments with right. the oxygen and all decrepit and gray and everything else it's disgusting it's wrong please stop yeah Sorry. so anyway we're passionate about these things right <laughs> thank you sharon 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 this sharon who just spoke who was there with us um yeah harpo and then Sharon should go in. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. Yes. I'm good because I've been struggling for an hour and a half to get the sound to work right so that I could be heard. You're good. All right. Now, I understand that on the other side right now, there are about like 75 to 100 or so 
souls that are kind of like Leonardo da Vinci's that are going to come back to Earth. Is did you say that or was that George? That was George in the 30th November talk. He talked about right. there are hundreds. He just said yes. Hundreds. That's there right. are hundreds of souls who are watching what's going on down here with the hundreds of souls. He used Leonardo da Vinci as an example. He said hundreds of souls with the genius of, the, of, a, of, of, a, of a Leonardo da Vinci type person who are observing what's going on down here and planning on coming back within the next several hundred years to help move things along. <clears throat> Boy, I hope it's sooner than that. I was hoping, for, well, not just politically, economically, but I, well, I, that's I, within 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 includes from the present too. Okay, yeah, because ecologically we need them. Yeah, so you know, so there's been there's help on the way is the, is the kind of the message, and they're paying attention to what's going on here to try to help out. <clears throat> these are some of the so so george i said something like and so instead of one or two coming down in a in a given generation right. let's say you know we're talking about many many dozens and dozens and dozens coming maybe even hundreds coming down in a generation or two that that's the idea yeah okay so so um yeah of the the ilk of a leonardo da vinci type that's that was what that was the, that was the idea. Okay, okay. yeah. I, I hope they like blues harmonica <laughs> <laughs> because that's what you play exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they. Uh, will. Thanks. Yeah, good question, Sharon Shigoyan. Okay, so this is for Lorraine. Um, yes, Lorraine. Uh, uh, and, and you know, it's been a while since I heard her, uh, but. If I understand you correctly, you're questioning how we're supposed to view Jesus, Jehovah, um, in in you know uh, post thirtieth November talk. And yeah, it was it was yeah. it was it was Amy, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it was Amy. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. uh, but I, I kind of see Lorraine's face. But anyway, uh, where you know if you've been if you've been taught to believe the bible and to go you're going to church and you believe um that you're supposed to fear these people and you're supposed to pray to those people and that they will save you or whatever change the situation and just so you know i was i was part of that um and you know since i've been with kelvin um I, you know, I really know that that Jesus is my friend, and if you think of if you think of those that you pray to as your friends and ask them for their advice, or you know, just to show you uh, the way, uh, it, it might it might put a little different um, emotion on it for you, and maybe maybe it would, uh, you know slightly relieve your anxiety i don't know i mean kelvin and i have been friends for eons <laughs> and so I, I look at kelvin very differently than i did when i first met him in in, in uh 1970s oh, no 1987 or whatever it was uh but uh uh anyway just i, no, that's I don't know that's great, and you're you're right. It was Lorraine. Uh, Amy had a different variation on um, the the Jesus Jehovah thing, but yeah, you're right. It was Lorraine, and so yeah, maybe that will help you, Lorraine. Um, the, the the what Sharon just shared, um, the notion of friends and so forth, Sharon. Yeah, I think it's good. It's a great way of framing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Anything else? Other questions? Well, we, I, we're supposed to end at 90 minutes. <laughs> we got a little carried away there. I just really? wanted to say that I look at you a lot differently uh, since I first met you, too. <laughs> I've gotten a little taller than when I was one when I was four years old when I met you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And um, 
let's see do we do we have a question here is it a question we are either we are ethereal so how many souls are there infinite number so it's a really good question i'll take this as the last question of this of the session today and then continue we'll see you in a month february 28th by the way is a tuesday i think well you'll, you'll get the event announcement and so forth in an email from me but um that will be the next of uh, you know q a uh we can continue then uh february 28th but um Grazina, yeah um we are ethereal so how many souls are there is there an infinite number so again this is that million dollar, $10 million, $100 million question, Gratina. But my 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 thinking on this, again, I'm the guy and a guy who tries to think about things consistently, what logically makes sense and what makes sense with the other thoughts that I've had about these other things, um, which is, I think there is a finite number. I think there's a huge number, Gratina, but I think there's like, uh, such a huge number that you might consider it infinite <laughs> that's the how big the number but i think it's finite i think it's a ginormously big finite number <clears throat> you know <clears throat> so look we have eight billion humans now in physical form on planet earth how many other i don't know how many millions of planets are there are on in in the universe there's there's a lot, okay? Because you know, you look at the numbers, it's like I can't remember what the exact numbers are, something like there's a billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy that we're in alone. Okay, you got a billion stars in the and then you have a billion galaxies <laughs> that they know about, and who knows how many there are that they don't know about, right? So what's a billion times a billion uh possible planets that might be inhabited? I don't know how many of them are. But, you know, and, and on our planet alone, we have 8 billion human beings. And we have another how many animal souls on our planet? There's probably a trillion, is what George and I estimate. There's a trillion souls on planet Earth alone. And then how many other planets? So whatever that number is, Gratina, I think it's a huge, ginormous number. <laughs> but I think it's finite. It, it, to, to, that, that, that's just my theory. Okay, so um, <laughs> anyway, thanks for all these wonderful questions. They're really great. Thank you for sharing so much, Sharon Coyle, for sharing uh, your thoughts uh, and, and comments on this. Uh, because I got a bunch of Sharons here, so Sharon Coyle. Uh, but sh thank you, Sharon Shigoyan, for sharing and uh, for being my friend since 1987 um, when we worked at the same. Well, we. You, she took over at a job that I left. That's how we met. I was seeing her as I was going out the door. I said, hi, nice to meet you. Have a good time working at this place. It's a great place. <laughs> That's how we met in 1987. Um, but great to see all the Sharons and everybody else here. <laughs> and um, we'll see you guys. Take care, Ron, my cousin Ron, and Tom's good to see you always. And everybody, Harpo, thanks. We'll see you in a month, okay? Everybody take care now. Be well.